You guys are on. You're, you guys are on pace. I think we talked about. You probably sell around two thousand Medicare policies in like seven weeks, a hundred percent by phone. Yeah, which is very unique. It's 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 an area of our business that agents are always asking me about. Um, walk us through like, walk us through a phone sale, man. Walk us through your your psychology of a phone sale, some setup, just some some tips and tricks from from the f- phone sale side. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's really in the beginning, it's all about having to quickly start establishing that you are the expert and that the subject matter expert and that you're going to work at building rapport. I always tell my agents in phone sales, because they can't see you, it is so important that they hear you. They hear your, I guess what I like to now call your, your cadence, right? Your voice cadence uh, so that they feel what you're trying to express to them. They understand the emotion. I always tell the guys that people buy on emotion and then justify with logic. So you can't come at them from a purely educational standpoint and just word vomit on them and give them this whole shmeal about how the Medicare program works and expect they're going to be like, sign me up. It doesn't work that way. There has to be rapport building in the midst of all that. And so that's why it's important when you get them on the line immediately asking open-ended questions is one of the biggest things. And so you have two different, two different avenues that you can go. Some agents love being scripted and some agents want to just have more bullet points and then make sure they hit those bullet points and then inject their own personality. And both ways work. That's the thing. Uh, and both ways are incredibly successful. We have guys who are 100% scripted every single time and they're writing 35, 40 apps a month. We have other guys that can write the same amount being unscripted and just hitting bullet points, you know, making sure they cover whatever they need to cover in the conversation. And so I think that if, as long as in the midst of both avenues, you're trying to also build rapport and you're trying to get to know them better and you're trying to dig and figure out what's their pain point. Why is it that they want information? Why is it that they're unhappy with their existing plan, whether it be a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement? Most times you'll find with med subs, they're unhappy because they're paying too much money. It's not because of the coverage. The coverage is phenomenal. They're just, they're unhappy because they're paying more money than they need to. And with the Medicare Advantage side, they're maybe unhappy because they actually had to use their Medicare Advantage plan in some type of, uh, you know, bad situation. They could have been diagnosed with COPD or they had to basically max out their, their Medicare Advantage plan and they see, oh my God, this cost me more money than I thought. And so now they're unhappy because of that situation. And they're like, how do I get back to a Medicare supplement? But those are pain points. And we can use those pain points because if we, if we understand them and we notate them and we know how to interject them back into the conversation, we're going to have a much higher chance of closing that person because we now know what's driving their decision, right? It's the emotion. Yeah, that's, that's good. Man. That's good. You, you, talked, you, you talked really quick there about uh, how to pivot, keep control of the conversation, move it where you want to go. That's one thing I, I also believe a lot in is, is in phone cells is the person in control, um, you know, not from a jerk standpoint, but just in control of the conversation is definitely going to get farther if you're able to keep control of it. And, you know, and it doesn't mean you have to talk a lot, right? Because you can, you can let them talk and them feel like they're dominating the conversation and they're sharing, which is what you want them to do, but you're able to just pivot and, and, and steer like you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. And and here's the thing. If you're in the sales game, you know, and I think that sometimes it gets painted negatively, the the idea that we're salespeople and that we are doing certain techniques to to try to control the conversation. Well, well that's our job. Our job as the subject matter as experts is to control the conversation, is to make sure that we're going down the right avenue and not chasing a, a going down a bunch of rabbit holes. So I don't think there's any problem at all with with doing the right thing in terms of asking the con- asking the questions necessary to steer them in the direction of providing the correct information for that consumer situation. Uh, so we do that exact same thing that you're talking about. Uh, Cody, you were probably actually the first person that taught us that. Um, you, you, you say it differently. Say it again. It's, it's ask. Yeah, yeah. Agree, answer, and ask. Yeah. Agree, answer, and ask. And so I also, it was, it was, reinforced by a book called the conversion code that another buddy recommended and then in there they call it acknowledge respond pivot meaning the exact same thing right 
but it's so powerful because that's what needs to happen. Anytime somebody brings up an objection over the phone, you need to acknowledge their objection. You need to acknowledge that you're actively listening, you hear it, you respond to that objection with an answer, some hopefully that's been well rehearsed so that you have a good, a good way of controlling, and then you go ahead and pivot with asking another question that continues directing the conversation the way you want it to go. Yeah, you, you mentioned something too I wanna, I wanna touch on, um, I think is valuable for most people. As you talk, talk, touched on rehearsing it. Um, walk us through what you do with your team. Do you guys role play? Like, like walk us through how important it is to constantly be improving every day. Yeah, so before we started, if you guys follow Cody, which if you're watching this, you follow Cody, you know how he practices with his team in the mornings. And those games looked so fun that we started implementing them into our organization as well. And my team loves it. They love it because it, two things. It gets your mind sharp in the morning. If the first thing you do, you drink some caffeine, we get in a circle or we get in a line and we start going through these exercises, it starts making you think sharp. And then after that, the other, or the second thing that I really love about it is the camaraderie because sometimes we'll say some off the wall stuff, you know, our objections or our, our pivotal question or whatever it is, we say some off the wall things, but it makes everyone laugh. And so now everyone's getting in a good mood. You got them endorphins flowing. So you're thinking sharply, you're laughing, you're enjoying being with your team and you look forward to every morning when you start doing that. So I think that that's probably one of the best things that, uh, that you've put out there, Cody, is how you start training with your teams in the morning. Because I know that if I am adopting it, um, several other people, are. I know Ramiz is doing the same thing. Uh, I've seen him you know, saying that he's going to do it with his team. And there's probably so many others that maybe I haven't told you yet, but they're probably doing it. It's fun. It's so fun. But we also, another thing that we practice, especially for any agents who want to use our scripts, um, you have to practice the scripts. I think especially with, uh, with us taking on doing Medicare Advantage as a call center, we actually have to by force, we have to do scripting. We have to say things the way that the insurance carrier wants us to say it. So in order to come off smooth, you have to practice. So we'll spend a couple days every, um, every week in the morning time practicing and going through the script so that we sound more natural as we're having to read through it. And the same thing with our Medicare supplement scripts, if people want to use those in our teams, they go through and practice it. And so we just go and practice with each other to talk about it, throw some crazy objections in the middle of it to see how, how they can recover from that objection and still stay on script. It's all so important to do, to practice. Absolutely. That's good, man. Uh, what, what, what do you guys do from like a, uh, obviously that helps with an energy standpoint. How important is energy in, in, in a sales room, in a sales team? Like, you know what I mean? Just throughout the day. Oh my God. I mean, there's two things uh, that are that, that I think if anyone's had an, uh, an employee or, or someone part of your organization who was a negative Nelly, you mm. know how quickly that spreads like cancer. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable the effect that one person with a negative yeah. attitude can have on the rest of the team. It's not worth keeping them, is it? Not no matter, all. even if they're your best salesperson, it's not worth it, is it? It's, it's, it's just not because your best person who has a negative attitude, even if they're selling 50 apps is not going to make up for the other 10 people they're affecting who aren't reaching their potential because of it. It just won't work. And so I think one of the things that has happened, had to happen in my office, I've had to let people go who are, who are those negative Nellies, who are those cancers to the office because it was affecting my other teammates and I could see it. And as soon as I let them go, I'm, I, I'll give you the, the last person that I had to let go. And this, this is not something I revel in or enjoy. I, I hate having to let people go. I, I, can tell, I can tell you don't like it at all, man. I, I don't. I, yeah. I hate it. But as soon as I, I remember, it was Monday morning. I let them go. We were in the last week of a month. And I said, I, you know what? I was going to give them the rest of the week and then let them go on Friday. But Monday came and I just thought to myself as I sat in my office, why wouldn't I give the rest of my team the best chance at closing out the week strong? If I let this person go now, I bet you, you'll see that happen. And sure enough, we had one of our best weeks that week. I let that person go that Monday morning. She walked, I let the team know. And there was just this, this black cloud lifted. And all wow. of a sudden, everybody, everybody just started performing. And I was like, so amazed yeah, seeing yeah. that and saying, wow, that's just proof in the pudding that one negative Nelly can really affect you. So energy 
Oh my God, it's so important. It's so important in an environment. And so uh, we also try to keep motivation up. You know, I try to give a rah rah speech in the morning to get everybody going, and we try to have good music playing throughout the throughout the that day. Was, that, that was my next. That was my next question. We adopted music, and it is like freaking amazing how much it's helped. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. I love it because it helps to keep that 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 good momentum going. So sometimes all of a sudden some slow music will play or some music. I just, I listen to it. I'm like, I can't get into this, change it, no, you know? And so we, we immediately change it and put on something that's more high energy because you do need that high energy music to keep the, the, the mojo flowing, I guess. Hey, if you love this video and you want to 10X your income, I got the video here just for you to help you do that. It's right there. Click on it and I'll see you there. Hey, most people don't know how to 10X their income. They're average, but they don't want to be average. And I'm guessing you don't want to either. I'm going to show you how the average insurance agent earns $50,600.